now I think we're ready to move on, move on to our next speaker. Uh, Jerry uh, Vila will talk to us about Tycho Brahe, uh, Danish astronomer uh, and his legacy. Uh, yes, uh, good, good evening, everybody. Uh, that was a rather very interesting presentation. I will start my presentation now. This presentation is about Tycho Brahe. He was born in 15, 1546 at Kanstrop Castle, Scandia. At the time, that was a part of the Kingdom of Denmark and Norway. If you wonder where the Scandia is, it's the southernmost tip of Sweden. But at that time, it was the Denmark, Norway. Well, he died in October 1601, age 54, in Prague of the Holy Roman Empire. He was a Danish nobleman, astronomer, and writer. He is known for the most accurate astronomical observations of his time. Tycho received an extensive education. He took an interest in astronomy and science in his early age. He studied at the universities of Copenhagen, Leipzig, and Rostock. Tycho's interest in astronomy started at the age of 13, when, when he watched a partial eclipse of the sun. He was amazed that it was possible to predict the day, so not the hour, of its occurrence. It struck him as something divine. He began his observations and soon, be, soon became conflicted by the inaccuracies of Ptolemy's predictions. On August 24, 1563, he watched a conjunction of the Jupiter and Saturn, as we did about two months ago, and found that the time of the closest approach was days away from the Ptolemy tables. After that, he dedicated himself to compile accurate record of the position of the stars and planets. Well, for that, he needed state-of-the-art equipment. And that cost money. On November 1572, Tycho Brahe observed a very bright star. It was a supernova 1572 which unexpectedly appeared in the constellation of Cassiopeia. He went out for the night walk, looked at the sky as he was used to, and was amazed. There was a star that never was there before. The bright star didn't move in relation to other stars. Tycho repeatedly measured star parallax every six months but could not observe any parallax. Hence, the star must be very far away. Or Earth did not move, he concluded. Now, there's the picture of the constellation of Cassiopeia. And here is Nova Stella, that's new star that appeared in 1572. On your right hand side, that's the current view by Hubble telescope of the supernova. It didn't move, it's still here, but it's much dimmer. Something about his personal life. He was brought up by his uncle, foster father, who supposedly kidnapped him when he was two years old. Now the couple had about 16 children, so maybe one less or one more didn't count that much. 
Later, Tycho defied both his natural and foster parents to become a scientist rather than a nobleman at the Danish royal court. He never married, but lived with a woman who was not of a noble status, and perhaps that was the reason he didn't marry her. They had eight children together. It was at the University of Rostock where he lost a bridge of his nose in a sword duel with his cousin over argument who was a better mathematician. Tell that to the kids now. <laughs> Since that time, he wore a prosthetic nose and was known as the man with a golden nose. His foster father slash uncle had saved King Frederick II of Denmark from drowning, but died of pneumonia as a result. The grateful king responded with hefty grants to the young astronomer. Visit, Tycho invited craftsmen to build Uraniborg, a great observatory on the island of Wen. He also searched Europe for the finest instruments like quadrants and armillaries and improved on them. The magnificent Uraniborg castle was equipped with a chemical laboratory, a printing press, flush toilets, quarters for visiting researchers, a private jail, and even a clairvoyant dwarf. He was also known to keep an elk or a moose there. This is the castle observatory at its glory. The center of the observatory was a gleaming brass celestial globe, five feet in diameter, on which a thousand stars were inscribed. Tycho was hardworking and charted the position of the stars and planets night after night. Local peasants, however, disliked him. They moved to that island to escape serfdom, to be free peasants. And they disliked Tycho. Why? They found him overbearing and were ordered by the Danish king to work for Tycho. Two days every week becoming his serfs. Tycho's accurate observations became the foundation for his understanding of the solar system. He devised the Earth based solar system, a compromise between Ptolemy and Copernicus system. This was after the Copernicus publication was already out in a print. His system had a stationary airs right here in the middle, orbited by the moon and the sun that in turn was orbited by other known planets. So this was a yet another system. Using his measurements, Tycho showed that comets were also non-atmospheric phenomena as previously thought. And that's what you see here is the portrait. It's not a photograph, sorry, the cameras haven't been invented yet, of the great comet, comet of 1577. His confusion, conclusion refuted the Aristotelian system of unchanging heavenly space. I wish we would have a photographer back then there, but this is just a painting. When he realized that the towers of Uraniborg were not adequate as the observatories because of the instrument exposure to the elements, 
and the movement of the building due to windy conditions, he constructed a second observatory. The new observatory was built on the same island, but was underground at nearby Stienborg in 1581. If you ever were in Denmark, you will notice it's typically windy. And you don't just have to be on the island. So this is that partially underground observatory built on the same island. And that's at the Stienborg. Tycho published several books in his lifetime. In 1598, he described his instruments used in Uraniborg and Stienborg in his book, Instruments for the Restoration of Astronomy. However, Denmark had a new king. His name was Christian Force in, 19, in 1597. And there was a disagreement between the new king and the Tycho. Tycho went into exile. In 1599, he was invited by Bohemian king and Holy Roman Emperor Rudolf II to Prague. In Prague, he received the title of the Imperial Court Astronomer to the Holy Roman Emperor Rudolf II. And this is the picture of one of the towers in Prague, just over the old town bridge. Now, Tycho was an observer and not a theorist. His contribution to the cosmology was a compromised geocentric model that created as many problems as it solved. He needed someone with the skills and perseverance to compose his data into a scientific system. So while in Prague, he invited well-known German mathematician Johannes Kepler, and I talk about the Kepler about a year ago. He invited him there as his assistant with whom he shares some of his observations. And this is the picture of Johannes Kepler. They frequently argue. Kepler threatened to leave, but they continue to work together. Tycho was also engaged while in Prague in astrology and alchemy. As most scientists of the time, including Sir Isaac Newton, some hundred years later. Outside of Prague, Tycho built an observatory at Benátky. Uh, that's sort of a current picture here. And that's where he recorded his best observations. In Prague, he was assisted by Johannes Kepler, as I noted earlier who later used Tycho's astronomical data to discover the three fundamental laws of the planetary motion. <coughs> here is another picture. Uh, Tycho Brahe is standing here on the left. In the middle, the Emperor Rudolf II is seated. And he was his patron at the time. Tycho kept his observations close to his chest. When Kepler protested he got not much to do, Tycho realized he must give something of substance to Kepler. Mars, as Tycho knew, and Kepler did not, presented an almost impossible challenge. This planet near to the Earth has been well measured but moved most erratically. 
Kepler said he would have figured it out in eight days. He was still working on the problem eight years later. In all, Kepler tested 70 circular orbits against Tycho Mars data. This consumed 900 pages of calculus, but it still failed. Finally, he tried to imagine what motion of Mars would look from the Sun at last. His calculations yielded their results. The orbit of the planet is a perfect ellipse. No need for epicycles or crystalline spheres. Here is the monument to Tycho Brahe and Johannes Kepler in Prague that was erected in 19. 83. This would be Tycho, and here is a Johannes Kepler. In 1601, Tycho and Kepler attended a banquet. There was much eating and drinking. According to Kepler, Brahe refused to leave the table to relieve himself. It would have been improper to leave without permission from the nobility. He suffered through the banquet and later was in pain. He died 11 days later. This is a Gothic teen church or cathedral in Old Town, in, Old Town in Prague. And that's where Tycho Brahe was buried. The cathedral interior is however in Baroque because it takes uh, 100 years to finish it often. So this is the Baroque interior of the church that was uh, started to be built in 19th century in a place of a much older church. In 15th century, this church became a Hussite church. During the Thirty Year War, it was returned back to Catholic faith. On, on this slide, there is a relief of Tycho Brahe about his tombstone inside the teen church. Now, the cause of this was probably a bear's bladder and subsequent in infection. Some base metals were found in his remains, most likely the result of his alchemy work. Tycho body has been exhumed twice. Once in 1901, that was 300 ye years after his death. This face, uh, this first uh, exhumation was Effectively, just to confirm whether there was somebody buried. And secondly, who it was. The time goes by and there are revolution uprising and wars. Well, they discovered somebody was there and in the middle of his skull, where the nose is, there was a green stain, probably from a brass nose. And again, the body was exhumed in 2010 to examine the circumstances of his death and to identify the material from which his artificial nose was made. The conclusion was that his death was likely caused by a bear's bladder and not by poisoning as has been suggested. His artificial nose was made of brass rather than silver or gold, as some have believed in his time. That was the conclusion of Danish and Czech researchers in 2012. Perhaps he used, his use of silver or gold prosthetic was only for special occasions. This is 2010 exhumation, uh, at this point, there is the removal of the tombstone from his 
grave. Now, what would be the Tycho Brahe le legacy? Although Tycho planetary model was soon discredited, his astronomical observations were an essential contribution to the scientific revolution. The impact crater on the moon is called Tycho. It's the one shown here on the right side in his honor as is the crater Tycho Brahe on Mars and the minor planet 1677 Tycho Brahe in the asteroid belt. The bright supernova SN 1572 is also known as Tycho's nova. There is a Tycho Brahe planetarium in Copenhagen. There is a side view of that uh, Tycho crater on moon. And here is the view of the crater on the moon. It can be seen with the unaided eye or binoculars. I'm uh, going to keep it short. So there is a time for questions here. So I will conclude with this. Tycho Brahe was a man who, whose exact measurements of the sky immensely contributed to scientific revolution. I thank you for your uh, attention. If you have any question, please write, write them down. Um, do we have any questions uh, for Jerry? Uh, we do. The first question is, why kidnap him and how is the uncle not caught? Well, I can only ask, answer that question to what I read. He was taken from his family. Now, there were 16 children in that family. Not all of them lived to the adulthood. So if his uncle had, quote, unquote, kidnapped Tycho Brahe, there was no big fuss about it. And uh, they brought him up. And, uh, well... He didn't want to serve the king, he rather served the scientific revolution. <laughs> so that's how he was kidnapped. He was simply taken by his uncle. Okay. Um, where did he go when he went into exile in 1597? Well, he traveled around the Europe looking for uh, employment. And it happened that uh, the Emperor Rudolf II, uh, who at the time resided in Prague, he was interested in many things, art, science, astronomy, astrology. Uh, and uh, chemistry. So he invited him to Prague, he got the invitation from the Emperor in 1599. Um, Blake wants to know, was it Tycho that defined the obsolete quadrant murals constellation? I again, was it Tycho who what? Defined the obsolete quadrants murals constellation. Quadrant. He had the number of the quadrants. Uh, he had improved on, on the quadrants that were used for measuring of the stars and their position uh, because that was before the advent of the telescope. Do I understand the question correctly? Um, well, may, maybe I can step in if I'm not sure if Blake can, but uh, so Jerry, there is a constellation uh, which is uh, a oh, quadrant I'm, constellation. Yeah, quadrant muralis, yes. Uh, I saw that you were talking about the instrument which he was measuring the stars. I do not know. He discovered many of the stars and many of the constellations that were all noted on that celestial globe that he kept in his observatory. So many, many stars and planets, well, not that planets, stars were noted on that globe. Um. 
Do you know who painted the painting of Tiho and Rudolf II? No, I do not know. Um, I can check on the internet again where I found that picture and see if there is a painter's name on it. But I do not. I do not know. Okay, last question from Blake. If a star catalog can be named using Mr. Brahe's first name, is there a hope for me, a stellar catalog named Blake or Blah? A star catalog named after Blake. Mm -hmm. Is that the question? Yes. <laughs> well, why not? <laughs> I'm, I'm in favor of it. Great. Thank you. That's all the questions. Thank you. Thank you, Emma, and uh, thanks again, uh, uh, Jerry, for your presentation.